So here at Microsoft, we're on the countdown to Cyber UK. Really looking forward to this year's event in Belfast. For me personally, it's my second Cyber UK. I was in Cardiff last year. For you, Stuart, though, I think you've been to all of them. Is that right? It certainly feels that way. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. No, I don't know. I'm not, not quite that old. Maybe I am. Uh, but yeah, no. So really looking forward to Cyber UK again. Seeing some uh, some old friends and colleagues. Uh, looking forward to the environment. Looking forward to seeing Belfast. I haven't been there in a, in a number of years. So yeah. looking forward to that as well. Yeah. And if you were to sum it up. Why do you go back each year? What's the benefit? What do you really get from it in particular that stands out? Well, the thing that I'm looking forward to most is engaging with people, uh, people I haven't met before. At the last Cyber UK, I was, I was accosted in a corridor <laughs> uh, by a wonderful gentleman who talked to me uh, about uh, the work he's doing in his school, about encouraging his students to participate in the cybersecurity of the school. Getting young people engaged in cybersecurity at an early part to make it part of their normal is so valuable and so important. And he was so passionate about it as well. And I love that, right? I love talking to people who are passionate about getting the job done. Fantastic, yeah. And um, that point around young people, kind of early in career, looking, exploring careers in, in cyber. Cyber first, of course, is a, it's a big priority for us at Microsoft, actually, the partnership with NCSC. Yep. We've got some of our Cyber First grads presenting this year at Cyber yeah. UK. Uh, really looking forward to that. And they bring such energy, fresh perspective, and ideas indeed into our teams at Microsoft and similarly to the conference at Cyber UK overall as well, right? But um, so the Microsoft team coming this year, um, we're delighted actually. We've really made it the centerpiece of our events plan. Um, so we've got Tom Burt, who is our CVP for customer trust and security joining us, coming from the US. So he will give the, um, the keynote presentation at the leaders dinner, which would be fantastic. And then we've got a team of experts really on our stand and presenting in the various sessions over the couple of days. So it's gonna be fantastic, really, really looking forward to it. There's probably a couple of topics specific to Microsoft that I think mm -hmm. we can bring to complement the theme of, of this year's conference and, and to add to that, particularly from our perspective, you know, we see across the Microsoft platform and all those organizations who partner with us and use our, our technology as well. And there's a couple I thought we might just touch on to, to give people a flavor of um, the sort of topics we'll be covering. Perhaps they wanna come spend some time with us on the stand or attend some of those presentations. So perhaps mindful of the theme of this year's conference around a future resilient economy. Perhaps we should talk about where we are today, cyber hygiene available today, and then with a look into the future as well. That's good for you. So perhaps we just start on the, the threat landscape first off. How would you characterize what we've seen over the last 12 months since the last Cyber UK? Since the last Cyber UK, of course, we've had the Ukraine invasion. We've seen a lot of uh, pivoting, certainly by uh, threat actors associated with that engagement into the Ukraine. We get an uh, unparalleled amount of threat intelligence. We see 65 trillion signals yeah. <laughs> every yeah. single isn't it? day. Yeah. I yeah. mean, that's just huge. Uh, and we have the ability to bring that information together uh, and, and make that intelligence actionable by our customers. So we, we get that breadth by bringing information from you know Xbox, Azure, Office 365, Microsoft Defender, to bring that information in and make that useful to uh, our consumers. And a lot of the things that we see, whilst you know the state actors have their place, I honestly don't think at the moment we're actually making them step up to that bar in the way that we should, uh, you know, as an industry, you know, yeah. not just not just uh, us. I think that defenders are hard pressed uh, for budget, time, resources, all of the other things that we, we think about in that space. Um, and the threat intelligence shows us that there are some really basic things not being done in order to raise that bar to a level where actually the bad guy is really going to have to work hard. And that's my concern. You know, not that the bad guy will get in, because the bad guy will always find a way. But are they working hard? Are we minimizing and containing that blast so that if I click on a link, it's a bad day for me and not a bad day for you? I don't want a bad day for anybody in an yeah, ideal world. Yeah, yeah. 
but you know, let's let's work out how we can minimise that blast and and constrain the effect that the attacker has and make them pay for it. And of course, we share that insight and telemetry and threat intelligence on an ongoing basis, appropriately with government and and not just um, Cyber UK, but across, but around year round, I should say. Um, and I think it is interesting, like the point you make around containing a blast where it does happen, because we have to assume breach and we have to prepare beyond the endpoint. But if we look at identity compromise, you look at business email compromise, for and then into some of the newer threat vectors like IoT, for example, that end-to-end -end protection and a zero-day posture for organisations is just so important, isn't it? A absolutely, and and you're, you're so right to mention defence in depth, right? Security is not about perimeters anymore. Not in a world where we're actively engaging with the outside world, right? In, in a, the old days when it was just me on a mainframe in the bottom of a bunker, then maybe that was okay. So to do that well, to build that foundation of citizen interaction, we have to do that in a way that has that strong foundation of good security basis. Yeah. And so I suppose for people attending Cyber UK, you know what to expect from Microsoft. We track 140 threat actor organizations, then 40 nation states on top of that. So we published this through our digital defense report just before Christmas. So come speak to us. We'll certainly be talking on these themes and sharing more and more. We can go as deep as people are interested to go in terms of the landscape that we see and to try and predict future behavior as well. Looking to the future, perhaps, and thinking about innovation and AI. Um, AI, of course, is not new to the security platform, but certainly there's a buzz around this topic at the moment. Yeah. How do you think about that? And what are you excited about in the future in particular in terms of how this could transform our defenses? So I think about this in the context of the skills gap that we have. I mean, we've got eight and a half thousand security professionals in Microsoft. So the only way we can do that, if you look at the 65 trillion signals that we get a day, is by bringing in artificial intelligence to leverage machines for what they're good at and allow the people to innovate on top of the information that they're getting presented by the machines. That's a really, really powerful model that we're trying to bring to our customers. But I don't think it stops there. I think if you look at you know, chat GPT, one of the, the phrases I came across recently was the idea of a prompt engineer. Oh, what's that? So the idea of being able to prompt AI in such a way as that it can produce a meaningful outcome. But if you then start applying that to the world of cybersecurity, we can start to think about how that would apply to mundane or regular tasks. So today, people spend an awful lot of time and money on penetration tests, and they should, right? It's, a, it's an important factor in understanding what your security posture is. In the future, maybe that becomes a task for an AI and a well-worded prompt. And then perhaps we could go the next stage, which is giving it a prompt to say, what's my security posture at the moment? Is it appropriate? Can you fix it? Can you bring me into health? It's always going to require human oversight and human insight. But I think a lot of that basic drudgery can be taken out of it, which might start to address the skills gap in yeah, the future. Yeah, to be compelling. Which is fantastic. Exactly. Which, well, I think exactly. we all want that. OK, and then maybe just to, to close us out um, in terms of this discussion for now, what would the message be in terms of basic cyber hygiene and what we need all of Microsoft's customers and, and the full industry to be doing in terms of cyber hygiene? So cyber hygiene is just absolutely vital. 98, insert arbitrary random number here, uh, you know, a percent of the, the, the attacks that we see in regular exploitation are defeatable with good cyber hygiene. And whether that's staying up to date or having something as complicated as an up-to-date antivirus or using multi-factor authentication or having uh, the, a zero trust model around your business, these things are it's fundamental, eh? fundamentals. I mean, they are the foundation that enable us to engage in business. We have to have that security foundation. Uh, and without it, the structure we build on top of it is unsound. It's a good note to finish on. I think it's sound advice, right? That, that uh, we, in tandem with the NCSE, our partners, will be with us at Cyber UK. We want to keep reinforcing that message and continuing to innovate in terms of the platform yeah. to underpin the defenses and help all organizations we work with be more secure and, and bolster their defenses.
Well, thank you, Stuart. Uh, great to sit down with you. So really looking forward to seeing you in Belfast on April 19th. So if you're attending Cyber UK, please come see us on the Microsoft stand or the various sessions we'll be presenting at, or indeed the leaders dinner if you'll be there. Hope to see many of you in Belfast on April 19th. Thank you.